Young Show. Hello. Tonight we're going to take you in imagination to a small principality in Europe. The fate of our story tonight is an approximate now. Their ugly black flag and be done with it. They tell us they are here as our protectors. They will fly their own flag above ours as a symbol of that protection. Why should we just stand here like puppets? Peter, you leave the balcony, please. I just don't understand. be able to strike once. Because when we strike, they will strike. Their fist is bigger than ours. We won't survive the blow. But we must do something. Let's do it now before they think of us as cowards. They don't think of us as cowards, Peter. They don't think of us at all. Well, when this is over, they'll think of us. When this is over. Perhaps one day, if we can never begin to search each other out as human beings instead of enemies to be conquered. Don't you hate them? No. But I hate what they believe in, their godlessness, their brutality. But if I believe in God, I must believe he created all men with a free will to choose right from wrong. I believe we have chosen rightly because our people live closer to the laws set down by God. Oh, not close enough, perhaps, but closer than they, at any rate. Then you're not going to fight them? Oh, yes, I'm going to fight. How? With the only weapon I have, with the belief that those soldiers out there are creatures of God and given the opportunity, will fight for his cause. If given the opportunity, they will shoot you in the back. That we know. Now I would like to prove the other, if possible. What are you going to do? I'm going to write to their general. I'm going to invite him to stay here with us. Mother, how could you? Mother! Please. True. He's coming here? Yes, at my invitation. Why did you ask him here? Because he would have come anyway. Instead of being his prisoners, he will now be our guest. At least it will start out that way. Now I must change to receive him. Change? I would not pay him the compliment. Oh, no. No, it's no compliment, Uncle. They say they disdain pomp and show, but in truth, the General would discard me completely in these clothes. And, um, Uncle Paul, no poison from the kitchen. The general is my target. Countess, he's coming. How do you do, General? Mother, I've seen your picture on a stamp. It's not very good. I thought it a great honor. And I liked it very much. Peter, General, this is my son. Very definite opinions for one so young. How old are you? Almost 12. He is barely 11. I believe you have already met my uncle, Count Paul. Good evening. Yes. You need more exercise. A boy almost 11 begins to look like a man. 
I get plenty of exercise. My son was ill when he was younger. We are very proud of his progress. Fine example of Gothic, your castle. And in good repair. Why do you live only in one tiny corner of it? There is no coal or wood for burning. This bathroom is the only room equipped with electric heat. General, as you know, the village is very small. The amount of coal it would take to heat this old building would keep most of the kitchens warm for the winter. The coal is for you. It is a gift. Thank you. But to heat the castle. I have business to conduct. I cannot do it in a bathroom. I see. Then it is not a gift. Madam, your manners are just as bad as your son's. You will heat the castle. Oh, General, one does not instruct one's hostess. But the concern of the hostess is for the guest only. True. I sincerely hope that your visit here will be a pleasant one. Marinka will now show you to your room, General. We will forget about the coal. As you wish. The bathroom. Yes, General. We are very fortunate we have water power. I'll get you coal. We have tried repeatedly to buy coal from your government. It is not for sale. While I am here, I'll get it for you. I admire your taste in art. I thank you for my husband's ancestors. I'm sorry, General. That belongs to my son, or I would offer it to you. Very bad, Ah. Uh... It was not intended to be an art object. But didn't you know? I have heard of your superstitions. Oh. But not enough, perhaps. Enough. I'll wash my hands before dinner. The boy eats with us. Of course. Good for him to be around a man. My son is quite a man himself, General. I depend a great deal upon him since his father died. Do you ride? Yes. Good. We go riding. I would think you would prefer more mature company. We believe it is the young mind that needs stimulation. We go riding. You can be nice to him if you want to, but I'm not. The general is our guest. Good. Maybe we can kill him as he sleeps. And go to hell for eternity. Oh, no, thank you. I don't think it'll be worth it. Mother, suppose we could kill him. Oh, all right, Peter. Suppose we could kill him. Then his followers would kill us. And then, then our followers would kill them. And that's why the last war is never the last war. It's only the war last fought. Oh, Peter, I don't know. I think maybe the general was confused by our attitude. <laughs> it's a small victory, but anything on the credit side with the general is a victory indeed. The only victory I want is to stand over his dead body. Oh, don't say that. Peter, since the beginning, that has been man's triumph. His victory, standing over the remains of his enemy. Look at us. Here we are today. The battle is still raging around us. Where is the victory? What is the use of winning wars if we don't win the peace for which they were fought? Peter, don't you think that it's time we realized another approach is necessary? Mother, would you think me rude if I said you women talk too much? I think we must talk. I think now we must stop and talk and think. At any rate, we must stop. Otherwise, there will be nothing left that we will be able to comprehend clearly enough to be able to 
think or talk about. I wish I could understand you. Well. I only know that the old ways of battle won't work anymore. I know I believe in God, and I know the general doesn't mind. I know I can't change his beliefs by force. I could only change them by proving to him that our principles were right. But only if he accepted those principles freely would there be any real victory. And you think he will listen to you? Well, he had to listen to somebody, Peter. He won't listen to anyone. He had to listen to someone to learn what he's already learned, didn't he? If we could plant the tiniest seed of doubt in his mind. A doubt. A doubt in the mind of that godless leader would do more to undermine his army than a bomb. For to go into battle with a doubt is to defeat oneself. Your history book picture of us. Rifted to our throne, balancing a fortune in jewels on our heads. My history books do not picture you. We study only the important ones. And we are not important. Like that on the map. A very strategically placed that, I think you'll admit. I can arrange for you to leave here. With your son, your uncle, if you wish. No, thank you. To stay where you have no use, that is a useless existence. Am I interfering with your progress, General? If you were, I would do something about it. I have a feeling that you are doing something about it right now. Not important to my government if you stay or if you go. We do our work. Then I will stay and do mine. What is your work? Specifically, I had no job. That I knew. However, for centuries, General, this castle has been the center of life in this district. We do not make the laws, we do not enforce them. We have just always been here to help in any emergency, in any way we can. Our leaving now would only add to the uncertainty of the people. And I believe that the expression with the people is that you are, uh, you are the soul of the village. Figure a village without a soul is more easily won. With a soul, without a soul, we win. My suggestion that you leave was only a suggestion, that's all. For myself, I would not care to stay here. There is no spirit. Oh, there is great spirit, General. We are a people of enormous emotion. I have seen no sign of it. I pray to God it continues this way. You do? Yes, I do. You might say that my job at this moment is to dispel panic. What would make you fight? I am fighting. Without, however, the physical satisfaction of striking out and contacting a solid object. Oh, I see. You would like to strike out. Oh, indeed. It satisfies the flesh to act with violence. Such a religious woman. You are strong in your belief to act the way you do. You are strong in yours, General, to act as you do. I? <laughs> I have no doubt. Oh, I know that. Otherwise, you could not do the things you do. So it's very interesting to talk with someone who thinks differently than you do. <laughs> Always makes me feel so good. I enjoy being right. But I have more important matters now. Madame. Madame. Yes, Madame, General. the newspaper. You keep a diary. Yes, General. Now that I would like to read sometime. I'm sure these last few pages, they are filled with hate. 
I merely record what has taken place. No one writes without emotion. Your account of these recent events would be very different from mine, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure they would. I come to speak to you about emotion. It's running very high now in the world outside because of some erroneous report that you are held here prisoner. The newspapers print that you are not free to leave. And that's a lie. My government is quite unhappy over this, this misunderstanding. You know it has long been my desire to, to arrange your exodus. I am very happy they are writing about me, General. You see, having one face on a stamp has its advantages. You become a recognizable personality, and people care what happens to you. All too often, you have imposed your will on faceless millions. And the world never knows about it. Well, what you do here will reach the outside world through curiosity over a personality, a face on a stamp. So my staying here is not as useless as you predicted, is it? We can't force you to leave. Whatever you do will be recorded. And not just in my diary. Oh, you are a stupid woman. Come in, dear. I've been out riding with the general again. I know. He's teaching me how to jump, though. Oh, I'm you? getting pretty good at it. I'm glad. Tell me, what was his lecture about today? His government, same old thing, over and over and over. First sight's like a recording machine. Do you understand the things he tells you about his government? Oh, mother, of course. They want everything. <laughs> That's it. Come in, General. Peter was just telling me he's becoming quite a horseman. Well, he's fair, that's all. Excuse me, I would like to change. Uh, General, I hope the jumps are not too high. It's dangerous in the snow. No need to worry about that. Oh? But you have cause to be greatly concerned. In what respect? The boy's activities. I would appreciate it if you would be more specific. His work with the resistance. Peter? You don't know that he is involved with a group that is violating the border? We've been aware of these activities for some time. Why are you telling me this? Because soon I will stop them. And if Peter is with them, when that happens, it will not be pleasant. What am I supposed to do? You are his mother. Stop him, of course. Did you speak to him? Warning is woman's work. Stop him. Thank you, General. Now, do I make this clear to you? His situation is dangerous. These people are going to be dealt with severely. What do you propose I do? Take him away from here. Oh, now I understand. You're telling me this to frighten me. You have good cause to be frightened. We are not leaving, General. Your son can be killed. We are not leaving, General. I thought I heard you. I was just shutting my window a little. Peter, the general spoke to me this... The general spoke to me this afternoon about a resistance movement among our men and boys. Yes, Mother? If you know anyone who's connected with it, tell them to be very, very careful. They know all about it. We thought they must. <laughs> Darling, you're so young. No younger than Hendrick or Jan. Don't worry, Mother. 
They don't give us much more than baby jobs to do. Baby jobs? Oh, Peter. Peter must do. I have to fight them, Mother. I just have to. I do what I can to fight for the truth. The truth? Yeah. Well, all right, son. All right. I won't infringe on your free will. Thank you. I'm not a child any longer. No. I know. There are no more children anymore. Not here. I do understand a little of what you are trying to explain to me. Huh? About hating what a person believes in, but not the person. The general. I hate all of his lies. But I don't hate him anymore. You know how often we've joked about your being the man of the house? <laughs> In truth, you are now, darling. And I'm so proud of you. It's getting late, right, Mother. Good night. Good night. I love you. And God go with you. Not in the castle. I'll ask in the village. Uh, no. Not yet. If anyone asks where he is, tell him... Well, tell them you think he went riding early this morning. Uncle Paul, where's the general? Have you seen him? Uh, not since late yesterday. I'll inquire in the neighborhood. Uh, discreetly. prisoners across the south border. I told you. Peter! Peter! Open! What was he doing with them? Why did you not warn him? I did warn him. And he said he had to do what he could to fight for the truth. For the truth! He accomplished nothing. This boy lies here dead for nothing. For nothing, General. His blood is all over your uniform. Look at it. Why didn't I kill him? Didn't you? Didn't you kill him? This boy lies dead because of you. You are the intruder here. Now do you doubt your presence? Yes, you do, don't you? Well, that doubt's going to get in your way, General. And it's going to grow and grow and grow! Harley. Harley. You didn't die for nothing, Peter. You didn't. You won a real victory. A real victory. You see, you see, darling. Strong faith wins strong men, and then makes them stronger. Well, good night. We'll see you next week. Visit the Loretta Young Show again next week. Same time, same station.